I'm Ben Bangham. I'm a professional fishing guide at the moment. Uh, really enjoying life. Um, lucky enough to fish for England. Um, yeah, just basically a fishing bum. Just love fishing, everything to do with fishing. Uh, fly fishing being my particular passion. We're here at Rolfs Lake. It's a fishery near Oxford. Um, it's normally a match venue, but John's very kindly let us fly fishing today. Huge amount of fish in here. If we can't get fish, then, you know, we're going to be embarrassed. I mean, I've guided for carp a lot this year, and it's something that I have done a little bit in the past, but certainly this year I'm doing more days guiding for coarse fish than I ever have done. Um, and I think there are two reasons. Accessibility, everybody's got coarse lakes like this one just around the corner, you know, uh, and a day on these is normally a fiver. You go onto a, a trout lake, you're looking at, you know, 15, 20, 30, 40 pounds plus. Um, so it's really accessible. It's great fun for kids. You know, if you get the fish feeding, you can see it. It's very visual. Um, your, your normal trout kit will do, but it's generally accessibility and price are the two key factors, I think, in, in carp, certainly carp, becoming more and more popular. Um, and it, it's absolutely everywhere. And it, it's such great fun you know, and not expensive to do. You've got to have good, strong kit. You know, they're really powerful fish, even at two or three pounds, they'll put up a huge scrap. Uh, once you hit into the sort of 14, 15 pluses, uh, then you're in for a real tussle. So make sure your kit's balanced, good and strong. You know, I've broken a few rods fishing for carp and uh, I'm sure you will too if you, if you get into it. So make sure your kit's up to the, up to the, you know, the job in hand. It's pretty hair raising stuff. They're extremely powerful fish. You've got to really clamp down make sure they don't get into any snags your rod's going to be bent double your arms are going to be aching uh, your back's going to be going you know especially after five or ten of these these fish but the, the key thing is is to keep in control of them you know give them a lot of power We're using powerful kit you know even though the five weights are, are relatively light rods they're powerful rods we're using sort of 12 pounds fluorocarbon straight through only about eight foot of it and really just locking into these fish not giving them not giving them an inch um, obviously you're gonna have to at some point but just really getting on top of them as soon as you hit them uh, it's really important otherwise they'll just spool you and, and that'll be it they'll be gone so um, get on top of them hit them hard be really really you know assertive with them right let's go catch some fish Today we're going to concentrate on blobs and sort of floating dog biscuits, things like that. Um, I really enjoy fishing blobs, stalking the carp, so putting no bait in, just trying to find the carp, put the blob on their noses and watch for the take. It's really good stuff, uh, but by far and away the easiest way of catching them is baiting the swim up, putting bread, dog biscuits, things out like that, getting the fish feeding and then putting an imitation on top of it. That's if you want to catch the carp that's the way to do it and you can catch huge amounts of fish quite quickly uh, and it's incredibly enjoyable very visual fishing all I'm doing is I'm spotting the fish I'm just trying to put this slow sinking blob on their noses and I'm watching their reaction so that one's just dropping down onto it I've lost sight so I'm going to watch the tip of my line now any movement and I'll strike into it so he obviously didn't take it, but there's more fish moving across to us now. Just put one out there. Just gonna let it sink down. They're looking at it again. He hasn't dropped down, so I'll make another cast. We've got fish coming up all over the place now as the sun comes out. It's cold wind which put them down a bit so it might take a little bit for them to start responding. I've got two dropping onto it now so watching my tip and my line. Not seeing any movement on it. Give it a little twitch and then move on to another one. So that's that's the orange I normally use although they don't seem too fussed about it at the moment. They say normally bright conditions this orange is fantastic but they're spooking off it some are moving onto it but they're moving off straight away so going to change the color and see what response that brings so ben what for got a few flies in there what, what have you got to them yes well today 
this is my normal collection of carp flies. I've got a few blobs, various colours, no weight in them so they sink nice and slowly, very visual. I've got a few sort of apps bloodworms, a lot of movement there, you know, really, really great carp flies. A couple of bungs for one of my techniques which I'll probably put on later and show you how to fish it. A couple of small floating flies with a cheeky buzzer sat in there. Uh, surface feeding fish, love those. And then a couple of these sort of your big, really, really big um, floating flies. Now that's how they generally start and then I'll cut them down to a size that suits for the day. Sometimes they like them really big, sometimes they like them smaller, but if they start big then you can always dock them to, to the size you want. But important to have a selection of colours because as we've seen this morning already, they don't particularly like the orange today, although it's probably my most successful colour. So I'm going to change the colour, I've got a few with me, so put a white one on and see how it goes. He's on it. He's looking. But he's turned away. Go on. Oh, he's turning on it. He's backing up on it. His tail's going for it. He's in. Give them some stick. They're really, really strong fish. That's quite a nice size one. Change your colour, change your fortune. Make sure they don't get anywhere near any snags. There you go, first of the morning. And that's a good fish. Woo. This is a common carp. Uh, good size, probably well, probably 14 pound. There's a lot bigger in here. But yeah, you know, it's a great start. There you go. Lovely example. Common carp. 13, 14 pounds. Really good start to the day. Right, so we're just gonna release this here. Put them back in the net, lower the net into the water, make sure they're all right. He seems good to go. So just drop the net, lift him out, and he's away. So great start, didn't take too long. Um, the change of colour seemed to work, so we'll try and catch a few more. Hopefully this will sun, the sun will come out and a few more will lift up, make life a lot easier for us. But yeah, let's get another one. right on his nose. Whew. Oh, that's so strong. Come 
Another good fish. So I don't stand on the line. where the net is. Who needs a gym when you've got carp on the fly? <laughs> well, just look at this. What trout gives you a fight like this? You know, this is quite a stiff rod. It's bent double. I've got a pissed off 15 pound fish trying to get away from me on the other end. It's just an incredible sport. You know, after five or six of these, you know you've been fishing. Not many trout in the world can do that. Certainly not in this country. Try and keep it out of those snags. There you go, nearly done. Oh, he won't fit in the net. And this is the bigger net. This is why we use 12 pound line. Oh. There you go. Oh. Even bigger than the last. Um, as you can see, I've got a mat here. And when you're fishing for fish this size, especially carp, you know, it's really important to have this good bit of padding they're very heavy fish they can do themselves a lot of damage on the floor so make sure you've got some really good padding a lot of fisheries won't let you fish without a mat so they're not very expensive you know 10 to 20 quid you make sure good bit of padding there you know it's all about keeping the fish fit and healthy you want to come back and catch them when they're bigger and, and as you can see they get pretty big hooks just falling out so we were lucky on that one get the net out of the way and you can see this beauty as you can see mats very useful so there you go another common carp a bit bigger probably 15 pounds 16 pounds just calm him down yeah so that, there you go that's probably that's bigger than I first thought. That's probably over the 17 pound mark. Really, really heavy fish. Huge width across the back. You know, I knew it was a big fish when I cast to it, but this is a very, very nice fish indeed. So this is what's out there to be enjoyed. You just got to get out there and enjoy it. I mean, look at that. And what a fight. Took it out of his mouth before he's ready. Look at the feeding frenzy now.
It was just a matter of time. I lost quite a few fish here to start with, just not getting the strike right, quite right. Either a bit too fast or a bit too slow. But you really got to watch the, uh, the flies, it gets just souped in. And uh, I'll tell you what, that's a weight on here. I don't think it's anywhere near as big as Ben's one earlier, but I'll tell you what, it's given this rod some welly. It's not a big, big fish. I thought from the snags and stuff over there. It's a fair lump, mine. It's giving this rod some real stick here. It's bent right over. It's a seven weight rod. It's the Snowby Diamond 2 carp rod, which is nine foot seven weight. And it's taken all the power. and it just sunk right to the bottom. They're obviously coming up to feed, but when they take that, it's a nice fish actually. It's a good fish. Let's try and work it over here, away from the snags there, isn't it? Oh, I hit something on the bottom then. Let's get this net ready. It's really important to have a decent set of sunglasses when you're doing this, so you can see the fish come up. It's just sunk right to the bottom. And it's bending that rod virtually in half. The action of a rod's actually quite nice. It's not a bad sized fish for my, for my well, my second carp. I, I did catch one about two pound at St Tinney Farm Holiday about a month ago. But this is a personal best. This is a stunning carp. My guess, actually, it's probably about 13, 14 pounds, but we'll get it on the scales in a minute and have a look. Now, obviously we've got the mat here, so we're just gonna slide him off, keep him nice and, and cover his face up so he doesn't move around too much. Well, here we have it, an absolutely stunning carp, a little bit of tail damage there, but a beautiful fish, a huge fight. One thing for it now, Get it weighed in, see how we're doing, and then catch some more. The official weigh-in. So yeah, what we're going to do is just tear this. Right, there you go. Get the fish in the sling. Let's see what the damage is. Smaller than I thought. 15 pound four, but still absolute cracking fish. That was a bit easier that time. It's amazing once you start, once you've caught one and know how they uh, have a fish, it makes it a lot easier. So you've really got to watch that fly disappear under the water into those huge mouths. Just give it a fraction of a second and then strike into them. Now this is a lovely fish. It's got a much darker back to it. So primarily it's common carp, uh, but they've got a few mirror carp in here. I've not seen a mirror carp yet today, but like I say, this one has got a slightly darker back. Get a proper look at it in a minute. This is just immense. So first cast effectively, second cast after 
that last fish plopped the fly right on its nose. A little bit of a swirl and that was it. Bang, took it. So I'm playing it fairly hard here. The rod action's fairly nice. It's got enough give in it for when it does pull or run slightly. It just takes the sting out of it. I can let the line go if I need to. I'm not sure. I think this is a bigger fish. It certainly feels bigger, but uh, it's a famous last words. They all look big compared to a trout. And this, well, I don't think it gets much better. It's quite a physical workout. I don't need to go to the gym, as Ben said. I think he was saying I was a scrawny little toad, is what he was saying, but... It's a cracking fish. Definitely a double. Be interesting to put that on the scales in a minute and see what he's doing. Hip. Hooked it right there in the top lip. Got to keep going. These are barbless hooks, so if I don't keep the pressure on, he could quite easily just chuck the spit the hook back out. It's a nice looking fish. See how it goes. I learned from last time we need two hands on this because it is very, very heavy. This is a big, big fish, certainly bigger than my last one. This is absolutely stonking. This is a beautiful fish. The last one I had had a couple of scales missing. This one is in thin, perfect condition. That rudder there on the back is just phenomenal. It's just an absolute powerhouse. And that's what puts up the fight when, you, when it goes down there. Takes a fly off the top, pulls it straight down to the bottom. My top tips would be, you know, make sure that your net and your mat is all set up before you get there. Uh, make sure it's all within easy reaching distance, that you can get to it quickly. Um, always look after the fish. Make sure, if you can, try and keep them on the mat. It's not always that easy because they can be quite feisty. Um, keep them out of the water as you know as little time as possible. Get your trophy shot um, and slip it back. Make sure because you've got to take the fish from the water to the mat. Take it in the net and vice versa. When you're taking the fish from the mat to the net, you know to the water, make sure it's back in the net. There's no point in carrying your fish down to the water because you could drop it and that'll be a damaged fish. So make sure everything's ready before you set off, before you start, and always carry the fish in the net to make sure you don't drop it. I'm on Facebook at the moment, it's called Ben Bang and Fly Fishing. The website will be up and running very soon though, but if you want any information, you know, contact me through the Facebook page, uh, Ben Bang and Fly Fishing, and I'll give you all the tips and handy hints that you need.